Let me jump right into the Word, and then I'll say uh, something more on the back end of the service this morning. So if you have your Bibles, I want to talk specifically to men and to dads this morning. So I want to share just a brief word as it relates to dads. So go with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 21 and jump down to verse 10. We'll spend some time there. I'll be speaking specifically to our men as we share and to our dads as we share. So wherever you find yourself, um, I just want to encourage you to just, maybe if there's a man that should be paying attention and listening, you kind of will be back on again at 11 and at 5 this afternoon. So make sure they're there to hear what God is saying and what God is doing in our midst. But let me just start here by way of introduction, and I'll read the scripture in a little bit. But before I do this, if you're sitting next to a man or if you know somebody that's not there, come on, just repeat after me. Say, men, come out of hiding. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, if you know father, say, dad, come out of hiding. Yeah. And tell fathers themselves, come out of hiding. So we'll be talking about that a little bit this morning as we relate so we can hear what God is saying and doing in our midst. Now, I am learning more and more that the presence of, of male um, figures in leadership positions in our church, as well as our community, seem to be on a rapid decline. If we were to poll family units, places of worship, even homes, you find that fewer and fewer men are present, um, nor are they there available to make sure that leadership is there and taking place in our home. Male representations in the home seem to be on a rapid decline, and something needs to be done about that. I want to make sure that we get a good feeling, a good grips of that. There, there are some staggering statistics that I want to share with you this morning. So there's a, some slides I want to walk you through. If we can kind of put the first one up here, just want to share these things so you can get a feel of what's going on. And here's the thing. Notice these facts. It says one in four children live at home without a dad. I wonder if you see that, right? Go to the next one. Let's just kind of walk through this real quick. In America, 23% of children um, live in father-absent home, and that was based on data that was taken in 2014. Keep going. Go to the next one. I want to walk you through this real quick. It says there are 2 million single father household versus, watch this, 10 million single mother household in the U.S. Isn't this amazing and staggering information? Go to the next slide. Let's walk through this. It says, children raised, I love that look on that little boy, amen. He just like, dad, where you at, right? <laughs> children raised in father absent home are more likely to experience, and lock into this, behavioral challenges, and the look on that brother's face said that he's about to become one of them, right? So go to the next slide. Let's kind of walk through this a little bit. It says there, men with absent fathers, this is staggering, are more likely to become absent fathers themselves. Why is that? Because there is not a model for them. There is not something for them to look at. Men, where are you? It's time to come out of hiding. Go to the next one. Then we're going to move through. And watch this. 92% of parents in prisons, guess who are they? The fathers. The fathers seem to be missing in our home. And here's what I'm learning, that men in leadership in, uh, seem to be missing and seem to be having a great impact on family. It, it's, it's really messing our homes up. And I need you to know that what I want to share today is that we need to get to the place where we learn to teach our men and we can speak to our men and say to them, men, it is time to come out of hiding. Before we go to the text that we find ourselves at today, the text we're going to look at, this is a story of David. It's a very, very familiar passage of Scripture that you might be familiar with. And let me just give you some context because I just want to pull a section out of this to kind of talk to it. David was called by God to be the succeeding or the next king over the Israelites. At the time of the text, Saul was king, and God had used David mightily, even as a young lad when he was at his father's house in the killing of the bear and the killing of, of the lion that was approaching his daddy's sheep. 
And you all know this quite well. There was this giant called Goliath who was threatening the children of Israel. And God used this young man, even in his younger age, in a mighty way to come and stand up against this giant Goliath to say to him, how dare you defy the armies of the living God? As the story would have it, Saul himself, who was king at the time, ended up being jealous of David because of how God was using him. You, 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 you might have noticed from the text that the women were singing, um, Saul has killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. They were attributing all the praise, all the glory, all the celebration to this young man that God was using so mightily. But then when we get to the text today, at the time of our text, here is what we find. We find now David, because Saul had grown jealous of David, Saul was trying to kill him, and David ended up running for his life. So when we get to the text, and I'm going to read it in a little while, David was in a place of hiding, trying to flee for his life, trying to preserve his life, trying to make sure that Saul, the enemy, could not get to him. Now, man, I need to say this parenthetically. You need to be aware that whether you realize it or not, the enemy is jealous of you. You got to hear me say that. He's jealous because of what God created you to be and how God created you, what God created you to do. So hear me, he's going to attempt to kill you. And a lot of us don't realize that because the enemy is on our trail, we find ourselves in places of hiding. And so today, I want to encourage the men to come out of hiding this morning. So let me read um, 1 Samuel chapter 21. I want to read verses 10 through 15. We'll talk about that, then we'll jump over to the B part. It says here, And David rose and fled that day from Saul and went to Achish, king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said to him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing to one another of, his dance, in his, of him in dances? Saul has struck his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. And David took these words to heart and was much afraid of Achish, king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them and pretended to be insane in their hands and made marks on the doors of the gate and let his spittle run down his beard. Then Achish said to his servants, Behold, you see a madman. Why then have you brought him to me? Do I lack madmen that you have brought this fellow to behave as a madman in, his, in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Now, What's interesting about this text, what's interesting about this text, right, um, is that th we find the guy that now who finds himself in a place of hiding, and I'm going to keep repeating this over and over again because I want us to hear this, is, 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 is that when we find ourselves, let me say this, in these places of hiding, here's what it does. It creates certain uncertainties. It creates these abnormal conditions. It creates these, these circumstances and scenarios that are not our own. And, and it has impact on us. So hear me say this. The greatest impact hiding in the enemy can have on one is that it causes us to pretend because it places us in places of pretense. So here's what hiding does. It places us in places of pretense. So I want to share two big points with you and then a couple of sub points. And the first thing I want to share with you as we look at this text this morning is if you're going to hide, don't hide in places of pretense. I want you to hear me say that. Don't hide in places of pretense. And men and fathers may not realize this this morning, but whenever we find ourselves hiding, what we end up doing is we go like David to these places of pretense. Here's what the text teaches us, right? David left Nob and he ends up in Gath hiding among the enemies of the Israelites. And, and you got to remember this. Just a few chapters earlier, he had just defeated Goliath who was from Gath. He had just defeated the Philistines. He was used mighty by God. But then what does he do? When, when Saul now is trying to kill him, notice what he does. He runs right into the enemy territory. And then when he finds himself there, here's what he has to do. In enemy territory, he has to pretend. 
And I want to talk to our men this morning because a lot of us don't know what places of pretense are and what places of pretense can look like and what it can be, right? So check this out. The bar where we go after work can easily become a place of pretense. I want to hear me to say that this morning, right? I know y'all won't like this because you think it's legal in, in Colorado, but the marijuana shop, there I say that, right? <laughs> it's a place of pretense because what does it do? It gives us an altered state of mind. Fellas, fellas, and, and I'm not trying to impact business here, but lock into this. A lot of us go to the barber shop on a regular basis. Well, I don't, but, but the barber shop can end up being a place of pretense. Why? Because you're trying to impress the brothers. You're trying to impress others into fooling them into thinking you are what you are not. L lock into this. Your jobs, your workplace can become a place of pretense. Because why? We're always trying to sell people a bill of goods to make us look what we're not. You got to hear me say this. This is a sad commentary, but if our relationship is not right with God, the church can become a place of pretense. What do you mean by that, preacher? Well, we, we live life one way during the week, shucking and jiving, and then we come to church, lock into this, pretending, right? It, it becomes a place of pretense. I want you to hear me say this. And, 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 and y'all don't get offended with me, right? But the house of the other woman... It's a place of pretense. It's not who we really are. And we must understand these things. And when we find ourselves in these places of pretense, we're in hiding. So I want you to hear me say this morning, men, fathers, dads, it's time to come out of hiding. It's time to come out of hiding and be all that God would have us to do. Now, now places of pretense, let me move to this. It, it does several challenges, and I want to walk you through four simple sub-points that I'm hoping will make sense to you. Let me, let me just say this before anybody think I'm preaching at them. The way preaching works is it begins with you, and then it goes out. So this has been very challenging to me. Here's the, here, here's the first sub-point, what places of pretense would do, right? It will cause you to fear that which you have already conquered. You got to get this. Whenever we find ourselves in a place of pretense, we start being afraid, let me say this, of the thing God has already delivered us from. I, want, I, I need to work this for a little while. If you, look, if you look at verse 12, look with me at verse 12, right? David is running and he's on the hide. He's trying to avoid Saul. And it says here, and David took these words to heart and, and um, was much afraid, this is interesting, of Achish, king of Gath. Now, when I read this, I'm like, you're what? Because understand with me, David had just killed the champion of the Philistines, right? And understand with me, when David found himself in Saul's domain and in Saul's home, part of Saul's requirement was that if you want to marry my daughter, then go into the Philistines' home and bring me back a hundred foreskins. And David said, is that it? And he went, and as opposed to bringing back a hundred, he brings back two hundred to demonstrate to Saul he's not afraid of the Philistines. But now watch this. All of a sudden, he finds himself on the run, and he's in a place where he should not be. And notice what it does. It causes fear. And I find that interesting. Because whenever I am out of position, I wish I had somebody here. Here's what it does. It causes you to be afraid of the very thing God has already delivered you from. I know I'm talking truth. Because, men, if you're honest with yourself, whenever we find ourselves in places we ought not be, it ain't like we can't conquer the thing. God has already brought us out. But whenever we go back in and we shouldn't be there, here's the first thing that happens. We begin to be afraid. It causes fear and it causes some crazy stuff to happen in our life. Now, notice the second thing that fear does, right? Whenever fear starts to step in, look at the second thing. Then places of pretense, it causes you to change your behavior. 
Oh, I got to flesh that out. I got to flesh that out. It causes you to change your behavior. I mean, look, look at, let me, read, let me read this again, verse 12, right? He was much afraid of Achish king of Gath. And look at verse 13. So he changed his behavior before them. I'm going to hit this. And he pretended to be insane. Okay? Once again, David now is in enemy territory where he should not be. And, and, and I've got to say this. This is, is the person who is destined to be king. This is the person that when he goes previously under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he goes into the enemy camp and look at his normal behavior. He is defeating. He is killing. He is conquering. God is getting the glory from his action. But then all of a sudden, he goes into this place of, of pretense where he is hiding. And the first thing that happens to him is his behavior changes. Be careful, guys. Let me help you with this. You see, here's what we do when we find ourselves in places we ought not belong, right? We, we start doing drugs so we can fit in. But deep down inside, we know <laughs> that's not really who we are. Come on, y'all. We start drinking when we're with the crowd so we can fit in. But we know deep down, can we be truthful this morning? It's not really who we are. We start messing with people of the opposite sex, right? We're trying to fit in because you want to have something to say with the guys. But we know deep down inside, come on, talk to me. It's not who we really are. We come to church dressed up, trying to cover up what it looks like when we're not in church. Come on, talk to me. But we know deep down inside, it's not who we really are. Are and you, you, you got to lock it aside. We, we must understand that when we find ourselves in these crazy places, our behavior start changing. Here's a challenge. Here's a challenge. I mean, you know, and we know when we're doing things that's not who we are, and we're trying to pretend. Next time we find ourselves in that predicament, analyze what we're saying, and then if you say, "Man, that preacher was right." Say this to yourself, self, come out of hiding. <laughs> yeah, just say, come out of hiding. Yeah. I, I want you all to hear me say this morning, men's and dads and father, God created you for more. God created you for greatness. Come on, and you've got to understand, it is the enemy that's trying to kill you. It is the enemy that is chasing you. It is the enemy that's pursuing you. Right? So we get in these places of pretense, and it creates fear, and it causes us to change our behavior, and then lock into the next thing it does. It causes us to deny our identity. That's the third thing it does. What do you mean, preacher? Lock into this. This is the future king of Israel. This is the future one through which the Messiah is going to come out of his lineage. This is a person that God foreordained before the foundations of the earth to have a mighty position amongst the Israelites, then all of a sudden he's in this place of pretense and look at him foaming at the mouth. Look at him crawling on his knees. Look at him acting in fear. Look at him changing his behavior because when we're in those places of pretense, it causes us to deny our identity. And I want you this morning to know, men, your royal priesthood. You're a people called by God to declare the praises of God. Let me go ahead and do Deuteronomy. You're created to be the head and not the tail. You're created to be above and not beyond. You're created to be the lender and not the borrower. You're created to be the first and not the last. But when we find ourselves in these places of pretense, walking in fear, changing our behavior, it causes us to deny our entity and we act like, well, I'm just an old G. No, you're not an old G. You're a child of God. No, you're not that. You are created by God for greatness. Walk in your identity. You got to get that. And as the enemy to try to fool you into thinking you are what you're not, because here's what these places do. It causes you to forget your call. As long as David was in Gash, in Gath, in the presence of Achish, he forgot he was king. I want you to hear me say it. it causes you to lose sight of your anointing. What do you mean, preacher? Here he is afraid of the very people that with one finger he can probably defeat them all. What was he afraid of? Because he was in a place of pretense and he missed what God was saying to him. And then it gives you this issue 
of a false identity. Here's the last thing it does, right? Then we're going to move to the second point. It causes you, fourthly, to lose respect from others. Because if you were to read the text in verse 14 and 15, here's what Achaz says. I've got enough mad men in my kingdom that I don't need you to bring additional mad men. And I need to take a moment with this because, fellas, you wonder why your wife don't respect you no more? It's because you're in that place of pretense. Come on, talk to me. You wonder why the children don't respect you no more. It's because you're in that place of pretense. You wonder why the employer won't respect you no more. It's because we're in that place of pretense. You wonder why, come on, your fellow workers and the neighborhood don't respect you no more. It's because we're in that place of pretense. And whenever we're in a place of pretense, we lose respect from those that we should be leading. And this is what was going on with David, the king of Israel, the future king of Israel. All of a sudden, he has lost the respect of the people that God has called him to defeat. So here's what I want to say to you men, fathers and dads this morning. I think it's time that we come out of hiding. I'm, I'm reflected on the story in Luke 15, and I'm going to hurry on to this of the prodigal son. Here's what this young man did. He came to his dad. He said, Dad, give me the portion of my inheritance that belongs to me. And he takes the money, and notice what he does. He goes to a place of pretense. And he did everything I enumerated, right? His, his, he, he started to, his behavior changed. Come on. He lost track of his identity. I want, he started to walk in fear. All of that stuff started to happen. And then when he ran out of money, I love the fact that the text says, and when he came to himself. And my prayer this morning, men, my prayer this morning, dad, my prayer this morning, people of God, it's time to come to our senses and get out of that place of pretense and make the transition to a place of refuge. Hear me say this. Your boys ain't got nothing to offer you. God is the greatest. You don't have nobody in that community to impress. God is the greatest. So here's the second thing that I'm going to wrap this up real quick. If you're going to come out of a place of repentance, we must retreat to a place of refuge. Y'all bear with me just for a moment with this because notice what the text in chapter 22, look at what chapter 22 says. David departed from there. Thank God for that. He departed from there and he escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and his father's house heard it, they went down to him and everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was bitter in soul gathered to him and he became commander over them, and they were with him about 400 men. Listen at me. Escape to a place of refuge. And I'm going to use this metaphor. Come to Adullam, right? Because here's what the word Adullam means. It means a refuge. It means a stronghold. It means a place of victory. And, and when David escape to Adullam, here's what happens. As opposed to him continuing to hide in enemy territory, he says, let me get out of here and let me get to a place where God can do a work in my life. Adullam was the place where David cried out to God. You got to hear me. Adullam was the place where David spent time introspectively seeking God for wisdom, for knowledge, for understanding, for what was happening in his life. Adullam was the place where he dealt with God and God dealt with him. Adullam was the place where God spoke and he strengthened David. If David had sinned in Nob by lying to Elimelech, repentance took place when he got to Adullam. If there were character issues in the life of David, when he got to Adullam, he dealt with them there. Come on. If, if he had hard feelings that he was holding against Saul, when he got to Adullam, he was able to deal with them there. If he wanted to take revenge against Saul, when he got to Adullam, I wish I had somebody, he dealt with them there. If he was feeling self-pity for what he was going through, when he got to Adullam, he was able to deal with it there. If he had concerns about what people were saying about the position he lost, when he got to Adullam, he was dealing with it there. Any identity crisis, what will the fellas say? What will the fellas think? What will my set feel about me if I unplug? When he got to Adullam, 
He dealt with it there. Men, listen to me. Come out of hiding and, and make it to a dulem. Come on, because God is going to meet you there. So hear me. It doesn't matter where you are in life right now. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter what your yesterday was like. I need you to hear me this morning. It doesn't matter how bad you blow it. It doesn't matter how bad you're blowing it right now. I'm saying to you, if you come out of hiding and make it to that place of refuge, you're going to find God with his arms open wide saying, Come unto me, all ye who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You will find God saying, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is, is easy and my burden is light. I'm trying to plead with you this morning. Come out of hiding and come to that place of refuge. God will be there. And lock into the, what that place of refuge is. And, and don't think that I'm saying, well, you got to come in the church because right now um, this coronavirus is preventing us from doing that. But a doulum can be your very car right now where you're driving. <laughs> A doulum can be the bedroom where you're watching this, this, this service right now. A doulum can be the living room. A doulum can be the shower. A doulum can be the toilet stall. A doulum can be any place where you say, God, enough is enough. I am coming out of hiding, and I want to meet you there. God will meet you in a doulum. Just come and watch what God is going to do. Here's what happens. Here's what happens. Here's what happens when you get out of doing. Let me share these things. Let me go pick them out on Wednesday, right? Destiny is restored, right? Destiny is restored. You got to get this. Destiny is restored when you come out of a dulem. Come on. Because got to the, prior to him going there, David was broke. David was ashamed. David was beat down. David was running for his life. But the moment he got to a dulem, God reaffirmed who he created him to be. God reaffirmed his identity and his destiny was restored. Here's the beauty of what we see in chapter 21, right? His Family life was restored. And I love this because this is beautiful, men, because some of us are struggling with respect from our children. Some of us are struggling with respect from our wives. Some of us are struggling with respect from our parents. And the reason they don't respect us is because we're not in that place where we should be. And when you come there, the family will meet you again. This is what happened to David. His family was there for him. And they restored him. And I love this. And ministry was reinstated. You got to get this. Because once David got himself together, notice what the text says. His set followed him. <laughs> All those who were broken and all those who were wounded and all the other ones who've been faking it and, and, and trying to fool others, everyone all of a sudden start to realize if God could do that for David, he can do it for me too. And I want you to hear me say, fellas, we've got to get to the place with ministry. When God brings you out, he brings you out to send you back in so you can go get others. But you've got to do it in a doulum. You cannot do it while in pretense. Get there and watch what God is going to do. Very, very important, Right? And then lock into this. Leadership, finally, is reestablish. A lot of us trying to lead. A lot of us trying to get ahead in life. And we can't get there. We keep struggling. We keep failing. Why? You're not going to get promoted in a place of pretense. Come out of hiding and get to that place where God could use you. Clean this up and watch what God is going to do. All of a sudden, you'll notice the promotions on the job. You'll notice you're leading your family now. The wife is all of a sudden surrendering to you and submitting to your authority. Come on, I wish I had somebody in here. But you've got to get to where God would have you to be. Let me say this, I'm going to wrap this up. You're probably wondering why, why men should I come out of hiding. You're probably saying that. Let me tell you this. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. You should come out of hiding because you're destined for greatness. You're destined for greatness. God knows you're supposed to be the next king. God knows you're supposed to be the next ruler. God knows you're supposed to be the next one that's on top. But Saul is trying to get you, and the enemy is hurling spears at you. And you come out of hiding so God could use you. And we'd be amazed at what God is going to do. Lock into this when we come out of hiding. Here's what happens when you come out of hiding. There's some slides I want to walk you through. Put that first one up there. Let's walk. Here's what happens. Involve dads. Improve their children's overall emotional 
and social well-being. Here's what that means. When you come home, Dad, all of a sudden, family life is stable. I wish I had somebody. Go to the next one. Notice this. Watch this. Children who live with their dads, they do what? Better in school. Could it be that the kids are failing because you're not there? Because you're not involved in their life? Because you're not helping them? They do better when dad is present. Go to the next one. Notice what it says here, right? Children with involved dads are less likely to be mistreated, right? Here's what dad is wanting. I love my boy, but he just soft. Well, maybe if you're there with him, he won't be as soft. Are you hearing me? And he won't be bullied in school because, you know, my dad's got my back. And if he doesn't know daddy has his back, everybody is on his. Come out of hiding, dad. Come out of hiding. Go to the next one. Let's look at this, right? Boys have fewer behavior problems and girls have fewer psychological problems when they have dads involved in their lives. Come out of hiding, fellas. Come to the place of refuge. Go to the next one. Look at these last two. Adolescent teen boys who live with their dads are less likely to carry guns and do what? Deal. Why, why is that? Because you're not there, dad. Because you're in hiding, he finds an alternate dad. And his set becomes his dad. His buddies at school become his dad. The drug dealer becomes his dad. The gang member becomes his dad. Why? Because we're not there. And it's time to come out of hiding. Go to the next one. Let me talk to our daughters. Higher quality father-daughter relationships is a protective father factor against engagement in risky sexual behaviors. I have one daughter and a granddaughter. And my commitment was those two is that I'm going to show them what daddy's like so no knucklehead man can ever step in my shoes. And think he can do for my daughter what I couldn't do. My daughter's beautifully married, my little grandbaby. I'm looking for her to find a, a matter of fact, before she gets married, he got to come here. <laughs> he got to come here. And I love how Veronica and Zoe, they're doing, just doing great. And it's just beautiful to see what God is doing. Go to the last one real quick. And notice this. Daughters are less likely to engage in risky sexual behaviors when they have consistent contact and a sense of closeness with their dads. Hear me, dad. When you're not there, the reason she cuddles up with him is she want to know what it feels like for a man to hold her. So imagine if you can hug her, if you can show her love, and if you can show her greatness and tenderness. She won't be in such a hurry to go find it somewhere else. Come out of hiding this morning, God. Come out of hiding. I want to pray for all our men this morning. I really want to pray, and I'm praying that you hear me. I'm praying that you sense what God is saying and you sense what God is doing. It's time to turn this thing around and do something completely different. So men, wherever you find yourself, if you want to come out of hiding this morning, bow your heads with me. We just want to pray. We're going to believe God for the best. We're going to believe God for the miraculous. We're going to believe God that God can bring you, God can keep you. And let me say this, last night we, we had a, a men's meeting here at Restoration Christian. It, it, was, it was virtual, but I heard those men speak about a commitment to other men. They spoke about getting men out of hiding and banding around them. We talk about accountability group and, and serving our wives and serving the women of our church and the women of our community. Connect with us if you don't have a church home. We've got a place to plug you in. If you haven't given your heart to God, it begins there. So let me pray. Just bow your head wherever you find yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for the presence of your Holy Spirit, God. Men in society have been in hiding for a long time. And you're telling them it's time to come out. So God, as men this morning make the difference to be dad again, to be father again, to be husband again, Holy Spirit, speak prayerfully and clearly to them, God. But most of all, God, may the men of the church, and it doesn't have to be just Restoration Christian Fellowship, any church in this city, God, in the world, in the country, to step up and start making a difference. We've served notice to the enemy. No more hiding. No more being in places of pretense. No more walking in fear. No more changing our behavior. No more losing our identity. No more losing self-respect. No more. No more. We're coming out of hiding. 
We're coming out of hiding. We're going to walk in truth. We're going to walk in love. We're going to walk in the character of God. So God, forgive us for running to those places of pretense. Forgive us, God. And if there's any man out there, Lord, that's saying, I want a fresh start, God, draw them. God, draw them. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for who you are. Lord, if there's one thing I want to be saved, God, as they open their hearts, you enter in and draw them to a closer relationship with you. We give this to you, God, that you get the praise, the honor, and the glory. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Let me say this, man, and we're going to wrap this up. If you heard me, maybe you're a woman, maybe it doesn't matter who you are, boy, girl, wherever you find yourself, we want to love on you. So if the word spoke to you this morning, you can respond by, you know, getting in that chat room, calling the church office, getting on our website, sending an email. We're going to respond to you because we want to be there for you to draw you into a relationship with God. Just make the decision to come out of hiding. That's all. Make the decision to come out of hiding. We're going to grab your hand and we're going to walk this out with you. I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning to remind you that it takes resources, and we say this every Sunday, your offerings, your gifts, your tithes make a difference. It enables us to bring this quality service to you every single Sunday. And if you'd like to give, I want to encourage you to click, um, text Give RCF to 73256. You can go to our website. You can just plug in there and just donate, become a regular contributor, become an online contributor, because your gifts go a long way into advancing the gospel. So thank you for joining us this morning. Let me say this one thing, and then we're going to wrap this up. On July 12th, I want you to mark this date. We are working hard. I know I miss seeing your lovely faces. It was just great to see the men last night. I mean, we just kind of hugged each other virtually. But we're going to do what we call a drive-by church, right? Drive-in church. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a huge event in our parking lot on July 12th. We want you, wherever you find yourself, get in your car, pack your family up and come. We're going to have a huge stage out there. We're just going to have a great time celebrating God Sunday, July 12th at 9 in the morning. Make sure you're there. So thank you for joining us. I just thank God for what he's doing. If you're with your husband or a dad or a loved one that's a male, put your arms around them. Help them to stay out of hiding. Buy them a good steak. Love upon them. So we thank God for you joining us. God bless you. Join us Wednesday at 7 as I have some men with me. Now we're going to talk about why men go into hiding and what we can do to avoid this scenario. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night.